So I'm sitting at home, chilling out, max and relaxing, all cool, enjoying some quality programming on a Monday night. Luke Cage on Netflix, because that's actually what I was watching. I was not even thinking about Monday Night Raw at all. That was until I got a tweet from my PWF Empire Live co-host Steven saying, hey, I don't know if you know this or not, but Sasha Banks and Charlotte are going to be main eventing Raw tonight. And shout out to you, Steven, because he was looking out for me and... Yeah, I didn't know it at that point, and that kind of complicated things when I found out because I'm currently in the midst of a liberation from Raw. I looked at the show, and I figured since there's not much of a reason for me to tune in for three hours on a week-to-week -week basis, and damn it, I'm not going to tune in. So I'm currently on a break from Raw, but I had to break from that break from Raw to tune in at the very least to this main event featuring Sasha Banks and Charlotte for the Women's Championship and that I did and coming out of that match I have to say I was not disappointed at all that was a damn good match and just a great overall production for the women in the ring to the announcers and everyone backstage who had a hand in booking this match. When it comes to Monday Night Raw at all, I said that there's not much of a reason for me to tune in. On the list of things, though, that are going right on Monday Night Raw, and believe me, that list is so fucking small. But however big or small that list is, I know for damn sure Charlotte is right near the top of that list if she is not the outright number one. Because I love the character of Charlotte so much and how she has evolved back into who she was down in NXT. When I looked at Charlotte down in NXT, I saw a supreme athlete. I saw a superior performer that didn't use her daddy as a crutch. Of course, it was great, and we all knew this was the daughter of Ric Flair, but she was out there carving out a legacy of her own, and she has returned to that on the main roster. And what's so great about who she is right now is that you can clearly see a connection based off of the character that Charlotte plays, the things that she says, and what she does, and how she backs it up in the ring. She talks to talk, and she also walks to walk. And that's Oh, so important because there are so many guys in WWE that can't even get that balance right. It's like they'll go out there and they'll say certain shit and it doesn't reflect to what they do in the ring, how they move. And when you have those complete characters, that package with a character, the persona and the wrestler and the moves, they're going hand in hand. That is the best of both worlds and it literally does not get any better than that. And Charlotte, she does a great job at that. And I love how aggressive she is in the ring. I know a lot of people do not like Charlotte's style in the ring. They say that she's rough or maybe too aggressive, but I look at it this way. Charlotte's entire gimmick is based off of the fact that she is genetically superior. She says being a champion is in her DNA. She was born destined for greatness. And if you look at it from that perspective, you have this mortal in Sasha Banks coming and attempting to believe that she can challenge this wrestling goddess, Charlotte. She's going to be pissed off at that. She's going to be aggravated. She's going to be agitated. And when she gets into the ring, hell yeah, she's going to be aggressive because not only does she want to beat you, she wants to embarrass you and she wants to humiliate you for even thinking that you had a chance at competing against her. And like I said, it all flows hand in hand. And we saw that story told throughout this entire match and this was the story of Charlotte. Say what you want, Charlotte did not win this match but she commanded the fucking ring in this match and the highlight of the match, I'm not even gonna say one of the highlights, the highlight of the match and I put emphasis on high, we have Charlotte go for a moonsault. Now a moonsault is nice on its own, but you not just any moonsault, a moonsault from the top rope, a moonsault from the top rope to the outside of the ring, a moonsault from the top rope to the outside of the ring, which was a fucking corkscrew moonsault. I literally, literally jumped up out of my seat and said, where the hell did you get that from? Where did you, like, where, what did you pull that out of? That was so damn amazing and I love that. And yeah, Char this match was the story of Charlotte and her truly being that superior athlete. And it was very interesting to me to sit back and watch WWE. Like, I can't believe anything other than this being a conscious decision on their part. I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but we did not get that really big swing of momentum for Sasha Banks really at any point during this match. Like, she scratched her way in at certain spots and she definitely did get on offense, but there is no big swing of momentum where you basically have the crowd anticipating and begging um, and, and, and attempting to will um, Sasha Banks towards 
a victory in the end because we had that big spot with the corkscrew moonsault from the top rope to the outside from Charlotte. And then some more stuff happened in the match, but it was pretty much over right after that. There was not this big thing where you had that momentum pushing Sasha Banks into the victory. So from what I saw, it was a story of, yes, Charlotte is a supreme athlete, but Sasha Banks has more heart. She has more resilience or whatever it may be. And I applaud WD. It was weird at first to say, hmm, it felt like something was missing from that match. But if this was a conscious decision on your part where it's like, okay, we are going to admit here that Charlotte is a superior athlete, then damn it, good on you. I like the fact that you had the courage to tell that story, um, even with Sasha Banks um, getting the win in the end. So that was great stuff there. Now, I do have to say this was not a perfect match. Um, this was not even the best match that I've seen from Sasha versus Charlotte. However, I'm not going to hold it to that standard because I think that that's frankly unnecessary. We get into situations like this where it seems as if people try to hold the women to these unreasonable standards of perfection and things like that and say that, okay, well, since WWE took this huge risk and they went out on the limb giving the women the main event, the match needed to be this and it needed to be that and it needed to be that. And if it wasn't any of those things, then this experiment was a failure. I don't even look at it as an experiment. What I look at that as is two competitors going into the ring who felt, it, it felt right that they were in that main event. It felt like two people who were fighting over a prize and they didn't let those historical implications like bog them down. And that's where it comes into play where um, I got to give props to the creative team and the, the announcers because WWE frequently gets themselves into these slippery moments where, for example, with the Intercontinental Championship and the United States Championship, they'll tell everybody in their damn mama about how this person won the title 35 years ago and this person won the title 10 years ago and all of these Hall of Famers did this. Not at one point did they beat us over the head with, hey, guys, this is important because these are two women. Hey, guys, these are two women main eventing. Did you guys realize these are two women in the main event? No, they booked it as two competitors who were going out there and fighting for a prize. And when you have that being the centerpiece of the story, not getting overshadowed by the historical implications of what's going on, I can't ask for anything more than that. Well, I can't ask for more. I can ask for them to go into the ring and back it up and make it seem as if they belong there. So the creative team, they did their part and the women in the ring, they definitely did the damn thing as well. Now, there was a point in the match, I, you know, in the interest of fairness, there was that one botched spot where Charlotte was supposed to pull um, Sasha Banks off of the ring apron and slam her back into the apron. And that was a pretty critical point in the match too because the story of the match was Charlotte working down Sasha's back and um you know for her to ram her into the ring that continues pushing that narrative like oh man Sa Sasha she's down in the dumps how in the world is she going to pull out this victory and yeah that that plays into the match not being perfect so yeah it was a botch but they definitely they recover from it and they moved on from that point Okay, now that I got all of that out of the way, giving praise to both of the competitors in the ring and the overall production of it, I do have to say that um, this did not feel forced to me. And it's kind of bittersweet when I look at the reason why it did not feel forced, like they were just pushing them into the main event where it didn't seem necessary. Um, like the, the sweet part of it is that I feel like this was actually a match that was allowed to tell a story. And we were looking at these two competitors in a big fight field fighting over a prize, a prize that both of those women cherished. And it seemed as if it held value. And yeah, that was all great. But the bitter part comes into play where I can't help but get the feeling that the reason why they main event it is because there's not much else going on on the show to demand a main event. I'm looking at this bullshit, hollow, phony mess that's going on with Roman Reigns and the United States Championship. That does not demand a main event. And as far as I'm concerned, neither does the um, Universal Championship picture with that glaring hole that is 
that 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 void that is Triple H. Like what Seth Rollins and um, Kevin Owens are doing, I don't feel slighted that they weren't in the main event. So it's not a situation where it's like a race to the top where the women are just oh so amazing and they're going up there like they're racing to the top of the mountain to hang with the guys. I feel like everything else has come down to a level where it's like, okay, well shit, let's have the women main event raw why not there's not much else going on so yeah that's kind of unfortunate in a sense and it reminds me of wrestlemania when you look at wrestlemania this year i believe that the women's championship match a triple threat between sasha becky and charlotte that was the best match on the show but i say that and i'm not as proud as i should be to say that especially me being a big champion and a big proponent of improving the position of women in wrestling i can't sit here and say oh my god yes they went out there and they tore the damn house out they did that but a big factor in them being the best match on the show was that everything else was subpar. And you can't, like, you have to mention that because that's a, an important part of the story. If everything else is being pulled down and it sucks and you shine, you know, on your own, but also because of that, like, I don't want that to be the case. I want them to attempt to do what they did down in NXT. And this has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with Sasha and Charlotte. It's, you got to step your shit up in every other aspect of the show. Um, just look at what they did with the NXT TakeOver specials when everything was really hot and popping with the four horsewomen down in NXT. And look at the fact that everyone had this, um, mantra like the sky is the limit we're gonna go out there we're gonna bust our asses and everybody is gonna race to the top of that mountain everybody is gonna race to the peak and when the dust settles we'll see who's still standing tall when everyone goes out there and they give their best and when that happened very frequently very often the women still stood tall and it wasn't a situation where okay we're going to suppress everything else to make you look good in comparison it's no everybody went out there they had the opportunity they had the platform to do their damn best and it just so happened on that moment in time you were shining you were the best that night and like I, I hate that I have to even talk about this because I just want to revel in the majesty of Sasha Banks and Charlotte and them doing a damn good job in living up to the main event picture and you know delivering a match that warranted that position but I do have to say overall for Monday Night Raw you got to step the rest of what's going on on the show up to the point where we don't I don't feel like it's a okay why not type situation I want everybody to go out there do their damn do their damnness to put on a great show and we'll see who is standing tall when everything is said and done so yeah that's it for me but um just to reiterate great job from Sasha and Charlotte tonight everyone involved in the overall production of this and yeah this was um good match and Sasha Banks she's now the women's champion so we'll see what comes of uh Sasha as a champion um, and Charlotte, I'm really interested in what step she takes from this point. And I love that emotion that she showed after the match. And it showed how important that title was to her. And um, a criticism that I had for Becky Lynch and um, Alexa Bliss over on SmackDown was that, you know, I'm getting to know the hero in the story, but I'm not really finding out much about the villain and they're not fully fleshing her out as a three-dimensional person. I feel like Charlotte is a three-dimensional person. You look at all of the stuff that she's battling, this uh, superiority complex, then also take into account the fact that she is a daughter of Ric Flair and every single time she steps into the ring or every single time that she steps out of her damn house, she's constantly battling against his legacy. And it's a situation where it's like, hey, I'm walking in these huge footsteps and I got to do something to make sure that my name rings out, that it's not, oh, hey, that's Ric Flair's daughter. Oh, it's, oh, hey, that's Charlotte. And you can see her competing with that pressure and those tears in her eyes. That had to have something to do with it. So, yeah. Um, and also the fact that she lost her crown. The queen lost her damn crown and her throne. So, yeah, all of that stuff, uh, great, great, great stuff with Charlotte. I'm really liking her character. And of course... The boss. Damn, uh, like, I'm glad that she is a champion now, so we'll see what uh, comes of all of that. I'll see you guys later on in the day for my um, review of SmackDown and uh, Talking Smack. And until then, peace out.